If you're a polyamorous person, chances are you've heard someone say, oh, I could never do that, I'm just a jealous person. Of course, in reality, we all feel jealousy and polyamorous people have to deal with it too, oftentimes more than other people because of the amount of relationships going on. So I wanted to share some of the ways that have helped me deal with my own jealousy. Now, disclaimer, I am not any sort of therapist, relationship counselor, anything like that. I am just a person who has experienced polyamory and learned a few things. So, number one, over-communicate. If you're newer to non-monogamy, and especially if you're opening up a previously monogamous relationship, you should be communicating constantly. If you feel a little bit exhausted by the amount you communicate, you're probably doing something right. Now you might be thinking, is this really worth the effort? If you're constantly communicating with your partner, the need for that communication goes down over time. Things you needed to communicate about before become more normal and you don't have to talk about them as much. Now, obviously don't come at your partner 24 seven if they're not in the right headspace for it, but I find that getting very specific with your discussions and telling your partner as soon as possible when issues arise helps so much with feeling secure. Number two, ask yourself, aside from causing jealousy, does the thing I'm jealous about actually affect me? Sometimes the answer is yes, this does affect me, in which case you can figure out why and then communicate with your partner about it as soon as possible. But then other times you'll find that no, this thing I'm jealous about doesn't really affect me at all. And while that might not get rid of your jealousy immediately, it'll sure help you take a breath. For example, my partner went to go see a movie with someone else. It's a movie I wanted to see, but we didn't plan to see it together. I'm a little jealous that they're seeing it without me. But does that actually affect me? Not really. I can still see the movie. I can still see it with them if they want to. I may be feeling crappy that they're doing it without me, but aside from that, I'm not really affected. Now let's change something about that scenario a little bit. Your partner goes and sees a movie with someone else. You did plan to see this movie with your partner for the first time. There was a discussion about it. In that case, the plans we made are being taken away from me and given to someone else. I would say that does affect me. Knowing that it affects me and why it affects me gives me a good starting point to talk to my partner about it later. Important note, you should always approach those conversations calmly and constructively and not in anger. But that's a bigger topic for another video. If this video was helpful so far, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button. It really helps me with the algorithm. Thanks. Number three, do something that makes you feel productive that has nothing to do with your partner. It's very important to sit with your feelings of jealousy and analyze those things, but sometimes you just don't have the emotional capacity for that. Your partner might be out on a date and you're not, and you're not feeling good, and you just don't wanna think about your jealousy right now. So go do something that you know will make you feel productive afterwards. For instance, I'm a graphic designer. I make cool polyamory designs when my partner's on a date and I'm not. Available at polyamfam.com. Sorry, had to grab that shameless plug. But completing these designs makes me feel productive. Now, I don't do this just to distract myself or sweep my jealousy under the rug. I do this because afterwards I realize that I am an independent person who doesn't have to get 100% of their happiness from their partner. And that makes me feel better. Number four, follow polyamorous people and polyamory accounts on social media. No, this isn't just a cheap way for me to try to get more followers for me and my friends. Having polyamory content in your social media feeds makes it more normal, and intentionally placing that in your feeds will help you remember that you're not alone and that there are people who relate to you. On the other side of that coin, unfollow toxic monogamy. A lot of us have friends out there who will post stuff like, my partner is mine, and if you even look at them, they're gonna delete you, and I'm gonna be mad at you, and unfollow that nonsense. It's only making you feel worse. Now, important note on this one, be careful not to accidentally out yourself to people who don't know you're polyamorous. A lot of polyamory content pages are public. But wait, there's more! Here's a little bonus method for dealing with jealousy. Meet your metamors. Metamor is a term for your partner's other partners. Now I'm including this in this video as a bonus because it's not for everyone and it also depends on someone else's boundaries. But I found that meeting my metas has helped me humanize them and show me that they're not out to get me and they're just another person. And if a partner who chose you also chose this other person, chances are you have something in common and you'll get along. Now it's important to note that dealing with jealousy is a process, not a light switch. There's no magic thing you can think to just turn your jealousy off and make it never come back. But over time, as you practice dealing with your jealousy, you can feel a whole lot better. So I've told you some ways that I deal with jealousy and I wanna know how you do it. If there's something you do that helps you with your jealousy, no matter how vague or specific, drop it in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace.